Good day, folks. I'm sure some of you saw this coming, but well, I'm gonna try it anyway because, well, I don't know what though what there is to lose because, well, this is an unsupported Mac that you are looking at today, and you might not think of it as such, but it is. This is a late 2012 21.5 inch iMac, and it's obviously stuck on Mac OS Catalina. So I think today we're going to experiment with the Patch Sir project that is on GitHub, as you can see in front of you, and I'm thinking. Well, let's see how it works, because otherwise, well, I mean, I'd be stuck on Catalina anyway. And, you know, if all else, I've got Mac West Big Sur here on my MacBook Air. So it's not like it's the end of the world if this doesn't actually work. So I've already got it downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of Safari here. And let's go ahead and open up the DMG file. And let's see how this works here. It says right click to open. Well, I mean, Sure, why not? Now, oh, for frick's sake. Welcome to Patched Sur. Patched Sur is a simple, easy to use patcher for macOS Big Sur on your unsupported Mac. It sets up the ideal environment for Big Sur and makes sure all your favorite services like iCloud still work. So let's go ahead and hop into it. I haven't set this up yet, so continue at your own risk, but you'll probably be fine. Well, I mean, this is a 2012 iMac and that's been noted to work fine other than the Wi-Fi, so we should be fine. If anything, I've got an Ethernet cable down there I can use temporarily to patch the Wi-Fi, so that's fine. Patch through a simple application for running Mac OS on unsupported Macs, blah, 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 blah. So basically it's like saying, you know, they don't warranty this, you know, if you have issues, you know, that's on you and blah, blah, blah. Obviously you need to have uh, metal supported graphics because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time because there's no OpenGL fallback mode, so on and so forth. Bringing the install is relatively simpler, blah, 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 blah. Anyways. So what we're probably gonna do is we're going to do release because I figure why not? This version of the patch does not support release updates since it was developed during the betas and the release might be different. Well, you know, it is what it is anyways. So, you know, we could probably do public beta cause I don't really care too much, but it's gonna really hog the internet. So, yeah, what the heck? We're gonna do an update because why not? I'm on Catalina already. The set vars tool allows you to properly set up NVRAM, blah, blah, blah. Well, we'll see how long it takes for uh, this to actually work because the internet here is five megabits per second. That's not exactly fast. And obviously downloading Big Sur is going to be an absolute pain in the butt. And I'm actually meaning that it's probably gonna take like over six hours to download Big Sur. So yay. Okay, so this looks like it's very similar to the old uh, DOS dude method of installing unsupported Mac OS versions. So you basically just boot a USB drive with a patched Mac OS installer on it. So that's simple enough. So looks like the current release is Mac OS 11.1, .1, which is what I'm gonna want. And apparently we can look at other versions, but you know, honestly, since the current release is 11.1, .1, I think we'll be just fine with that. So anyways. So now it's time for RIP Internet. So I'm gonna go open up Activity Monitor. You can see just how slow it is doing spotlight searches. It's very awful. In fact, actually the version that was on there was version 10.14, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, not very fast on Catalina at all, so I'm not expecting Big Sur to be an improvement whatsoever. I'm just gonna go over to the network tab and I'm gonna keep an eye on the received bytes section because this process up here is going to be the one that will let me know how it's going. And we'll go from there. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this down there while I keep an eye on this, make sure it doesn't crash. And we'll go from there. All right, it is now several hours later, as you can probably tell based on the clock up there. But we now have our enter password to continue things. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. So let me just type in my password. And I think you have to actually press continue. Yep, there we go. So now it should install the Mac OS like installer thing to my hard drive. So we'll see how long that takes because I'm on a, oh, actually it looks like it's done, cool. Okay, so I need to get a USB stick, so I will be right back. All right, got it. So now I'm going to actually take out this lightning cable because I'm not using my phone on my computer at the moment and find a USB port and then get the flash drive plugged in there. 
And I am going to have to go into disk utility and I am going to have to format this as a uh, Mac OS extended, I'm sure, because it's currently FAT32. So that's fun. So uh, I'm sure that this thing will actually do it. So let me refresh. Yep, yep, we got a scroll bar. So now we should have our, if I can actually click and drag this with one hand, probably not. <laughs> da, 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 da. Where is it at? There it is. All right, so I want to use that USB stick there. Yes, we do want to erase all those files. And there we go. So we'll see how long this takes because it looks like it's just going to do all the work for us in one great big swoop, which is actually not too bad of an idea, actually. Yep, there it is. Mac OS Big Sur Beta. So we'll see what kind of a beta version I get. I'd be surprised if it's uh, the final release or if actually it's a beta. We'll see. Because 11.1 .1 is the final... Oh, there you go. Yeah. Patch server would like to access files in a removable volume. Yes, you are certainly able to. So yeah, it is the final 11.1. .1. Good, because I wanted it to be the final 11.1 because .1, I don't want a beta. I mean, if it was a beta, I mean, big deal. I can just update to the final one. But you know how it is with unsupported Macs. You have to be careful in case you have to repatch things because that's not very fun. Okay, well, this isn't too terribly slow of a USB stick. So this should take, if I estimate things correctly, probably about 20 minutes at most, maybe around that figure. It is a fairly big installation. I think the actual file itself is like nine or 12 gigs. Of, I don't remember if it actually increased in size from the time that I was running the betas or not. But anyways, so whenever this finishes, I will pick back up the camera. All right, well, it did finish a couple minutes ago. It definitely did take a lot more time than I was expecting it to, but I mean, no matter. So it says that we need to run the installer like normal by booting the USB stick. And then once it finishes, you can patch your text with the post install app that is inside the applications folder. Now, whether or not that actually exists or not, we'll have to see how this works, but I will keep note of those instructions there. So anyways, we'll go ahead and eject all this stuff. Uh, I should probably quit this application real quickly before I eject this virtual disk. And let me turn my speakers down so the bong doesn't blast around the household. We're gonna hit restart and restart. And uh, let's see what happens here. Now this is normal for the late 2012 iMac to still show the wallpaper here when you hit shut down or restart because it's so slow that it takes forever for it to get off the wallpaper anyway. So then once the screen turns off, we can hold down option on the keyboard. And there we go. And I don't expect the boot chime or anything to change because I don't believe there's gonna be an EFI option that'll you know, update the boot chime just because I go to Mac OS Big Sur, kind of like how it did on my, um, on my MacBook Air. So we're going to do install Mac OS Big Sur. And as I figured, it uh, gives me the prohibitory sign because I think what you have to do is you have to use the EFI boot. And I obviously selected the wrong one. So I'm a dum dum. So that's uh, what not to do. So let's try not to be a dum dum this time. And uh, let's actually try to run the proper thing even though I know they try to hint it properly, but my Mac is new enough that you can boot the uh, EFI stuff. I mean, obviously you could be able to do that on the Sandy Ridge machines, but you get the idea. Okay, so let's EFI boot, let's see if it works. Oh, it's probably gonna power cycle and then do it. I think that's how this works. I These unofficial things, man, I don't do these a heck of a lot, so I wouldn't actually know <laughs> either that, or um, I just can't see what's on the screen. So apparently, as it turns out, I just had to hit the install Mac OS Big Sur thing once again, and it actually started booting up just fine. So I don't get what the deal was with the prohibitory sign. I mean, obviously, duh, this computer is not meant to run Big Sur. But uh, for some reason, it just didn't boot the first time. But now it is booting. So I don't know if the reboot had anything to do with it. It may have. So might have just been better to just shut down. Every time I hit the EFI boot, it just powered off the computer like immediately as soon as I tried to boot it up. So I don't get what that was about. But as long as this, I guess, starts up and works for what it's worth. And I knocked my camera to focus, but I digress. As long as it works, I don't think it really matters too much. Okay, and here we are. 
We now have our install Mac OS Big Sur thing. I really like how they did the recovery thing. It looks so much better and a lot less dated than the old ones did, especially because it's in dark mode. So that's pretty nifty. I don't know if the like patcher software is supposed to be in something else uh, or if it's already patched to where the machine restrictions are removed. So I'm not too sure. So hopefully this doesn't brick my machine if I just go and say install Mac OS Big Sur. It's, I guess, it, it was worded like it was going to not cause issues, but we'll see. So anyways, let's go ahead and run this agreement and we'll put it on my Macintosh HD and it should just upgrade Catalina with no issues, I hope. That's the idea anyway. About 23 minutes, that's about right, because that's how long it takes for pretty much any Mac OS install on a 5400 RPM hard drive like this in this iMac. So we should be okay. So I'm gonna let this run and we'll see if I end up with another prohibitory symbol or something like that. Well, so far so good. It rebooted and it seems to be working just fine. Although it's kind of tacky looking at a white EFI screen with a white Apple logo. That's just bizarre. That's the first for me because usually I've seen they change the EFI to black after it boots up, but this one stays white for some bizarre reason. So it's kind of a unique touch. Either way, it seems to be installing just fine. So I'm going to just let it do its thing. All right. I'm going to be quiet because it's like past midnight, but uh, we made it, guys. We sure did make it. So let's go ahead and log in here and let's see what kind of quirks we got to deal with. So definitely the little spinny thing is inside of a circle there. You can see the screen flash the Apple logo for some reason. However, I think we have graphics acceleration because again, this is a late 2012 iMac. The NVIDIA 600M series of GPUs does have metal support, hence why I was able to run Mojave and Catalina natively. So graphics acceleration should not be an issue for this computer. I think the only issue is going to be Wi-Fi. And I think we have a setup assistant we may have to press like one or two question marks into, but otherwise we should be at the desktop once it does its initial configuration and set up the thingamajig at this rate. So uh, exciting. Okay, we have made it to the desktop. And now, as you can see, I'm working on patching text files right now. So basically I left the flash drive that's in the uh, USB port in the back of the computer. And I went in and I started the patched Sur application, which brought up this little window here. And I'm now running the operation to patch text files. Of course, I had to open for consistent preferences of all things, but whatever. So now I'm just waiting on it to patch text files. And it's probably going to make me reboot. And of course, since I have a late 2012 iMac, Wi-Fi is completely toast. But that's expected. That's what normally ends up happening with unofficial Mac versions. The Wi-Fi usually dies. But anyways, so let me bring up about this Mac and we'll see what it actually shows here. I'm kind of curious. Okay, so it just shows iMac. The specs are correct. So that's fair enough. So actually surprisingly not bad, you know. In all honesty, it's really not bad. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I should probably pick back up the camera when it reboots. Uh, but so far, graphics acceleration mint it's working great so that was my big thing i was hoping that the graphics acceleration would stick around and it did so that seems to be working perfectly fine so hopefully video editing is not an issue so what you have seen so far has been edited on this computer and for what it's worth you know honestly this wasn't the worst idea ever it seems to be perfectly fine at least for what my expectations were and you know this isn't obviously going to be for everybody because well let's just get the elephant out of the room here it's not supported officially by apple and i know i did run into some compatibility issues nothing major though it's stuff that can be fixed of course not the least of which is going to be my vmware fusion program down here so if i go to click on that it tries to launch and then it just says unsupported mac os version and it only gives you a quit button but I have a solution to that. I just have to get it installed, but I figure what the heck, I'm gonna get this video out first before I play around with that. But otherwise, everything else that I've been working with regarding Steam, third-party apps, even first-party ones, it's been just fine. You know, honestly, I will say Big Sur, ah, man, it, it, it's not so bad. Like there's a lot of little things that make it a, little, a lot more enjoyable to use. Like one of my big gripes with Catalina on a machine like this is that system preferences 
was a pain in the butt. And what I mean by that is this iCloud thing up here. Because in Catalina, I had issues where every time I would open up system preferences, it would always beach ball trying to load the iCloud information up there. And now, for the most part, unless the system's under like an extreme load or whatever the case might be, you know, then I can open this up and then it's pretty much instant. Of course, there's other things that have worked perfectly in the past, like, you know, my remote desktop software that was already optimized and Discord needs a new Big Sur icon. Come on, people get on with it. But then there's been some other programs like OBS got a new icon. Um, there's some other apps that I don't have in the dock that got Big Sur icons. Well, Spotify needs to catch up as well, but whatever. And I'm sure Microsoft Office is going to be following suit eventually with giving the uh, Big Sur icons or <clears throat> Big Sur themed icons rather to uh, you know Intel users. I think it's exclusive to the M1 beta like versions of Microsoft Office right now. Not a big deal, but you know, it's whatever, little nitpicks. So yeah, overall, I mean, if you were a little more technically inclined to do something like this, well then sure, you know, that's totally doable, at least on a late 2012 iMac like this, you know, a complete base model. And, you know, the only thing that really suffers is boot up time is a little bit slow. And I mean, like, it's really bad. It's no worse, really, than Catalina, because Catalina did take forever. But I mean, it, it seems like this is fine. You know, you can live with it. As long as you give enough time to start up, it seems fine to me anyway. And honestly, I would say that's a win. So, I don't know. We'll see how long this lasts. I'll see if I get the capability of running the next unofficial release. If I keep this computer that long, we'll see, because I might go Apple Silicon after this. But this will be a nice carryover, just so I have the latest OS release. And, you know, I don't know how often I'll actually run updates on it because my internet sucks. But luckily, I don't really think I need it, at least for a good long time. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But either way, I'm going to wrap this video up because, honestly, there's not too much to talk about other than maybe gaming performance. But this isn't a gaming computer. And as such, I'll cover that in its own video if y'all are interested. Because I've got Steam and some Steam games that I'm going to try running but it's all up to you all. If you want to watch that, you can just let me know in the uh, comment section down below. But with that having been said, if you like what you saw, well, then you know what to press. If you didn't like it so much, well, then you also know what to press. Get subscribed down below. Click the bell so you don't miss when I upload new videos. And with that having been said, thank you all very much for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one.